Thanks for tuning into this episode of the Human Performance Outliers podcast with Zach Bitter. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's really interesting. Before I shifted into more of like the low carb field, like um, even when I was a newer dietitian, like what I saw in acute care, somebody asked me, they said, you know, what if you could give somebody, what would the number one tip you could give them in nutrition? Or like it, out of everything. And my, my first thought, and I, I said this for a while, I said, don't stop moving you know, had nothing to do with nutrition because I, I had seen people become so deconditioned, yeah. you know, and like you said, you know, once you lose your muscle mass, you're, I mean, once you break a hip statistically, the, yeah, your, your rate of recovery is not good. And, you know, in my time in acute care, I often heard doctors and I heard other people say like, look, as you get older, like you're just, that just, this just happens. This is not something we can really slow or we can really stop. Um, but I questioned that. I said, you know, we have accounts of, of people living very long lives, you know, especially historically people hunting, fishing, being very active into their eighties, nineties. Mm -hmm. And what I saw in the acute care setting, um, and you might've seen this as well. Uh, and obviously we've seen this in people in their sixties, seventies, eighties, but I saw people in their forties and fifties that were so overly fat and so under muscled, they Mm -hmm. literally couldn't even walk the few steps to the bathroom. Right. And, you know, you question like, what is going on here? So yeah, I guess I will ask you, you know, in your experience, is this just an inevitable part of aging or is there something we can actually do about this? I think that that's a great question. And first we have to define sarcopenia. The definition is not, you know, it, there's different working groups of the definition. So as we think about the framework, we'll say it's a decrease in muscle mass and function. And while we think about it as aging, you know, as it relates to aging, it's exactly as what you say. It can begin in your thirties and forties. And I believe what's happening is that, you know, there's a few reasons, there's a few working paradigms as to why we believe it happens. There is an an inevitable change in skeletal muscle. The reality is we do age. We do lose muscle fibers. We do lose the nerve innervation. We do lose the ability to recuperate. And of course, as we age, we're up against increasing in inflammation, inflammatory markers like CRP and, you know, TNF alpha. However, if you think about the ability to change the trajectory of aging by really optimizing skeletal muscle in your youth and decreasing systemic inflammation and optimizing for hormones as we age and mitigating extra medications, and of course, optimizing for protein and nutrient status, vitamin D, then the potential to change what we see and what we have come to accept as common and inevitable can change. Absolutely, yeah. And you know, working in the hospital, working in clinical care, I often saw, um, you know, I would see doctors and I would see well-meaning dietitians tell patients, especially even elderly patients, you know, on a, um, a heart healthy diet, which we could go into how I feel about that, but I, you know, that would take hours. Heart healthy diet or diabetic diet, they would say like, they would say, I want you to keep your protein small, you know, three to four ounces, um, you know, soy protein is fine. I want you to reduce meat. And often what I saw, and I know this has been your experience from what I've seen you post is when you tell somebody to reduce meat or reduce, you know, high fat cuts of meat, it's not like they're replacing it with a very nutrient dense food. Yeah. Often to patients, that means, oh, I'm going to have another roll. I'm going to have another, you know, something very starchy, very sugary. And what we end up doing is we take maybe the small amount of protein out of people's diets and they're just replacing it with processed carbohydrates. And Absolutely. My, I'm sorry. Yeah. In my experience, it's, it's one, one of the worst things you can do is tell people the small amount of protein they're getting. Cause yeah. we know statistically elderly people eat less protein and, mm-hmm. and correct me if I'm wrong. They don't synthesize protein quite as well. Well, you bring up a great point. Thanks for tuning into this episode of the Human Performance Outliers podcast with Zach Bitter.